Okay, we're getting ready to work on this 72 Sportster here. I got a machine out to chain shoe tensioner boss here. I had the weld back on. This is what a stock Harley one looks like right here. This one here was split and broken off. It's split down the middle and then sheared off. So, this is what uh, my reinforced one looks like. It's a little bit bigger than this little dinky one. It's also a little lighter, so I'm going about, eh, about this far here. A little extra material stuck everywhere. So now we get the machine just back down and put the hole in it where it belongs. This here's a shoe that goes on it. So that goes in there like that. So obviously it's a little bit too high right there. So that goes in there like that, so it's supposed to be. Alright, so this kit is here for a sample to uh, so I know where the hole's at. So I have to measure it to see where it is. This here is one of my typical uh, sportster uh, mock-up cases. Yeah, it's got a little oil leak. Yeah, right down there. Something else to fix later. Ooh, this one don't have one. This one doesn't have the drain hole in it. Yeah, must be a good one. Okay, so first thing I do is get this apart. Now when I weld this all up, I um, bolt it all together with all your case bolts. And then it's uh, put it in the oven, heat it up. You preheat it, and you weld it, and you throw it back in the oven and post heat it and let it cool off. That way, hopefully the case is not uh, too warped. At least that's the game plan. So, I'll go ahead and get this uh, stripped on down. Get the thing up in the middle and clean it up. So, nothing you can't do in your backyard with a, with a dull file, right? All right, so. so I'm gonna just pull your bolts out. You might have had a broken motor mount back here too. I think that was on the list of stuff to fix too. So this was a good running motor. You know, take the whole thing apart to fix it. It's easier to do that than it is to try to fix that in the back. Which would be pretty difficult to do. Take the motor, pull out a bike, strip it down, clean everything all up, and then you, got, you can work with it and do it correctly. It's actually less work doing it that way than trying to do everything by hand. A lot better job when you're done. It only cost you a few gaskets and a few extra hours of work. But better way of going. Backyard jobs don't tend to hold up very good and cause other issues down the road. This one here, we're gonna probably fix the oil leak. I just got one of them. This here is your chain oil hole down here. We'll take that out and put a plug in it. Nobody uses rear chain oilers anymore. They don't like all the oil leakage. See a lot of stripped out holes here too. That one needs to be here to cool. So I got a few thousand miles so I rebuilt it a few years ago. But Out if it's got 10,000 miles on it. Now obviously it's harsh miles. Ah, that twisted my wrist. Being cold doesn't help it.
Either side wants to turn. One of them is going to turn. And the other one turn. Okay, get all the bolts out. We just pop apart. Friendly persuasion. That appears to be a broken motor mount. It's missing a little bit. Okay. Bone and see we got a little hot in the oven. Get that nice burnt smell to it and everywhere. Finish. Break a little bit of off. Use the heavy stuff. Alright. I'll get this cleaned up and we'll be back. And we'll answer the phone. Okay, we're back again. More interruptions, as usual. Alright, so, now, this case I forgot to fill in the hole right here. Because I didn't know it because the case was bolted together. This is your big leak. That's right here. It goes between the crankcase and the primary chain case. And so you want to get these things plugged up so they don't leak. Because whenever you get oil in here, it just blows through this valve. It's supposed to be a one-way check valve, but it's pretty much lets the oil go across. So these here you get weld them up. You want to weld these up from the inside because you want to get this little hole to fill. And otherwise you got to try to fill up a, this whole big area over here. So it's a lot easier to do it from this side when you get the case apart. So you don't want to put a lot of heat right here in the case because you can split the case wide open. So you don't want to do it with a gas torch. You pretty much want to get in there and get the hell out. Even a TIG torch is not too good because it puts too much heat and it'll actually stress crack the case here. So I usually just use my wire feed. Just get in there and hit it real quick and get the hell out. So we'll, we'll do that in a little while. So right now I'm going to start getting this on the um, over here in the mill and get it squared away. Alright, so now we're over here. case is obviously not flat, so it's bolted up like this because we're welding here when it shrunk. It makes the case potato chip like this. So it's got a little bit of that in there. Now we cut this way and clean up, we'll get some of that back, but right now it's not exactly dead flat like it used to be. Okay, so we're going to find a place to pinch it down here so I can cut on it. Hold it, strap it down like this. We'll indicate off this surface here to get it squared up, and then we can go from there. I'm not sure how much of that can even be seen with a camera. People say I like the tripod shots. I think they suck. All right. Strap clamps here. Okay, there's a big one to pull it down flat. Do a couple of 
couple strap clamps over here on the two ends to pull down the outside edge. these clamps Use this one let's be getting closer I put this on back so I get more of a contact area on the case here help eliminate warpage this has the game plan drop that down one more You want to keep it toward the edge of the case where all the strength is. We don't warp it. You don't want to push down too much on this clamp either because that warps the whole center of the case and you can break it. Cases are weak, you can break them pretty easy. right here. I can push on the nut. All right, get it pretty tight. So, we got this pushed right here. Like I said, you want to keep where the metal is here so you don't warp it. You got this one to hold the center. You got to keep the, this torque down on this one because you will it will indent the case and it can break. And this one here, I stuck a nut under here. You to see it or not? There it is. That way I can push right here in the center of the case, once again where all the metal is. And you push on the sides here, there's no support and it will warp the case. And same deal, you can break this stuff. So as long as you keep on the, the column of strength, you can actually tighten these pretty good and it won't hurt it. But you just got to be careful. So Now I'll put the indicator up here off the head over here, the mill. And I'm going to indicate in the surface here. This should be perpendicular to our bolt pattern, which is over here. But I want to measure it to make sure. So basically just measure the center of the hole to the edge and make sure it's centered on both. So give me some kind of an idea what number we're using. Looks like about 480,000 number. This one here looks like a half. So it's probably a half inch. Harley likes fairly straight numbers, so so it's gonna be a half inch offset from the surface. And then you gotta measure the center line this other way. Looks like we are one, probably one seven hundred. Yeah, might be a little bit more than that. Might be one seven fifty. The holes are not quite centered because of the way the way they tap in. So you got to look at how the thread is cut. So this one here. We're not seeing as much, so it's going to make the hole further that way. This one here, you see in this thread, not this thread, so it's going to make so it's going to make it wider when it looks. So if you do that, you're probably pretty close at one seven fifty. It's really hard to tell that way. Now the other way we can tell, you can put a bolt in there, look out the bolt head. I just have a couple bolts laying here. 
I was too close, but because I'm holding it. And these kind of wobble around a little bit so it doesn't give you a real good accurate number, but we gotta see what we're gonna be close to. Put the bolts in the fairly deep and keep them wobbling around so much. Now we should be able to get close to a real number. If the bolts are made accurately, you can measure from one edge to the other and get your dimension center line from one hex to the XX to flat surface. Otherwise, you've got to kind of guess where the centers are. So if we do that, edge to edge, see we're about 725. Not 750. If you measure the uh, these other ones, it's, it's about 275 minus the head diameter, which is 550. So you take the 275, take it off the 550, so you go one. One, two, three, four, five, and fifty. Put you about seven twenty-five again. And the last way, just measure the center line. Once again, you kind of guess on the bolt. And it looks like seven twenty-five because seven hundred is not there. It's really close to seven hundred. I think it's 725. So I got three different ways of measuring it. So I'm thinking it's going to be 1725, which is kind of an odd number. I don't know why Harley's doing that. Yeah. Whatever. You know, the shoe's right down here. You see the slot height is 1 800 on both. So you think the whole pattern would be one 800 that's what the slot pattern is, but I know damn well this ain't one 800 over here. So ideally I want to try to catch the original hole, because I didn't weld the whole hole up solid. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to get in the center of the case where they break when you weld them. But, uh, you know, I'm still thinking 725 is better. Okay, so we got some rough idea we're going to use. So now you go ahead and hold this down. Put it back on the tripod. Pull you a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and look at the indicator here. Make sure we can see it. We're going to scan that. Get up that height you can see it best. There we go. So we're going to move the case back and forth here. Get this to be zero. I'm going to bump the case on the two sides here with a hammer. Right here and here to kind of center it. Get the 
We got a hard side and a soft side. So which way is the indicator going? It's getting higher. See how when you push on it, it goes it goes the same direction. So that means this is high. It means the case needs to go this way. It's moving real good. It appears to be pretty close. Tighten all this down. Put the dial over here so you can see it. Oh, it stays right there on the 10, so that's pretty straight. Okay, now we gotta go ahead and center off this hole right here, figure out what dimension that is at, and then we can come off this from here. Now we can get the center this way by doing an edge finder. And I'll show you how to use that. Or you can guess what the hole is just by putting a drill on the chuck and going up and down a few times. That one's quicker. That's easy how I do stuff. Quicker is always easier. But for now, we need to cut this down with a face mill and get it cleaned up. It's just a face mill. Faces off the part like this. Way too close. There you go. So this has five cutters in here. It hits on one, maybe two at a time, because these are all hand ground, because I keep resharpening them. Because I'm cheap. I don't like putting new ones in all the time. Ah, damn tripod. Ah. Hard to do stuff with one hand around here. You can't see what the problem is over here on the floor, but there's a lot of crap down here in the way. Okay, we'll put that up there where you can see it, hopefully. Put the air in here. Okay, that goes there. I get to go up, which is over here. That's how I get my exercise. It warms me up, too. We like being warm around here. Okay, here you go, one face shot in 20 minutes, that's enough. I don't know which one of the five is going to hit first. You just rotate it and lift up the table until it hits. We hit. Still hitting. Okay. So we go ahead and zero out our table over here. So we know where we're at. Right there. So that should be within five thou where we need to be. So now we go ahead and cut the case over here. And right now we're way high. One, two, three. That's three hundred thou, I just dropped it. Come around, we cut it. On the side of the table, you might be able to see better. Okay. And the way 
the chips. Oh, you can get hit. Find a spot that's in the danger zone of chips. The camera might be get hit by chips. It's good for the limbs. Okay, we are in gear. Crank the speed up. Get more chips that way. Camera's in the line of fire. Get the camera out of the way of fire. I don't want to screw up my lens. Unless I use my hand as a blocking device. Okay, so we got like 290 pounds to go. So there's a 50 cut. And the welding, you never know how much you're putting on, so you always make sure you put it off. I spent a lot of time getting it last little bit in there. Then you cut it all off, and you don't need it. safety glass if I know how to get out of the way of the chips. Number 50. Until we touch the boss, it's fun on there. Cut about a foul or two off of it. See how warped it is. Doesn't look too bad. All right, so you can see kind of where we're at on this here. So you can see that's a little bit low on the back side here. So I'm going to go ahead and take it down about two more thou and see if it'll clean up. Right now it's a little bit high. High is not good. Now if you want to see if the case is warped any right now. Take a shim. This is a thou and a half. And you put it down between the table here and the under part of the case and see if this goes under the case. 
This is not going into the case at all, so that means the case is flat right now. It's been held, it's being held down flat. When you take the load off, it might warp, but right now it's flat. So this case is just worn away over here from the shoe being loose and it just crushed the aluminum. So I'm gonna go ahead and take two more thou off and see if that cleans it. Okay, it looks like I cleaned up just about all of it. Should look pretty good. Alright, so now the surface is all clean. Right there. Oop. We can see it a little better. So this is now all clean pretty much all the way across. And this is obviously flat here. And this is a lot bigger boss than the other case. Now I gotta cut this back flush with whatever this surface here is. So I gotta cut all this off here. And I might just trim these up edges here, make them a little more smoother and square. We're gonna do that with an end mill. End mills works hard for cutting sides, face mills are for cutting on the top. Oop, wrong direction. So I gotta change out this cutter and get a different one. Let's see what I'm gonna use for an end mill here. Here, got a radius edge on it. Yeah, I can. It'll fit between the two bosses here, so I skim the edge, clean it up a little bit. So we'll put this one in there. Take out the face mill. Get over here. There's the edge just hit. Zero that out. Pull it out a few thou. Real clean. Okay, so now I know where my edge is at. I can go ahead and cut this all the way across and clean up this whole surface here. Put the camera back over here. We can kind of see a little bit better. There we go. Cut this surface right here. We'll skim this surface here. I'm going to cut this whole edge off on this one. Then I have to drop this down a little bit lower. That should be enough. Yeah, this is high speed steel, so we got to turn up it slower on carbide. So cut our speed back a little bit. We're at 1200, drop back to probably about 700. There's 720, and a little cut more. Okay, let's see what we get.
into the cutter. That gives a little bit better finish. It also tends to grab. Conventional milling means you cut the cutters turn this way and the feed's going into it. Climb those when you're going the backwards way, you come in this way, it's just rotating this way. Two different ways of doing stuff. So we'll cut another 50. cutting right now. There we go. Okay, so now we're barely skimming down here. This side of the case is slightly higher than that was down here. We, we indicated right in here, and you can see how the mark only cut just a little bit right here. And then it, it fogged out from here on the end, it was cut the same, that's where we indicated it. So obviously the case is not quite cut square because this side here was cut, was higher by probably about five thousand. So but when you got a big welder, you can't check it, so it is what it is. Okay, now we got a little bit of a burr up on here, which we can take off with a cutter if we want. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and cut the surface over here a little bit. Okay. down there. And right there is a new zero. It's conventional milling, so it's a little stiffer, a little worse finish. up five. Actually didn't cut too bad. Cut pretty good. Good material. Now I want to chamfer this. I want to radius this edge off a little bit so I'm just going to come back and cut on a 45. <laughs>
pad we're just on the side should be too bad all right let's get the chips out of there I'm gonna go look at it get the camera out of the way I don't like shark edges, even if Harley left them. Still clean them up. Probably way too close to even look at anything I was just doing. Yeah, I was, you don't even watch what I was doing there. Oh well. Okay. Change out this cutter. One day I'll fix that, but not today. Or tomorrow. Save that for next time. Okay, so now, yep, can't get in there with a stupid ass tripod. All right, so that's what we got right now. So I deburred the edges, so it's not gonna hurt me. Cut it all the way around. It's a lot thicker than the stock case, which is right over here. So you can see a difference in size. So it's got two fingers to the edge of the hole. Two fingers on this one covers the hole. So it's a lot thicker. All right, so now I gotta put the, the hole through here. So we're gonna come off this hole here with the drill bit. So get this out of the way. Mess with chips. 
All right. Need my drills. Okay, so three eighths tap drill is probably a Q drill. It's a common size. Q, 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 Q. This is gonna be my centering tool, so it's not Q. Let's do some other size. Drop down a couple. Nope. All right, what is it, 5 sixteenths then? 3 A's, 20, or 16's, 5 sixteenths. Yeah, Q is for the fine thread. That's why it's not working. 5 sixteenths is 3 12. That's why the 3 16 didn't fit in there. 5 sixteenths is this one right here. So it says 3 12 on it. So this theoretically is the one that goes in the hole here. Yeah, look at that. Kind of goes in there. Yeah, it's a little, a little tight. Okay, so we'll put this in the drill truck, come back and center off of this hole, and then we can come off here with the dimension and zero it out up here. I don't know why my damn not keeping a memory of what that thing is. That's on my x-axis. That's this one over here. Reader down there might be getting dirty or cold. Temperamental like me. Doesn't like being cold. That would never happen, right? All right, so crank this down a little bit. Try to out of the way. You do is you watch what the drill does when you do this. Yeah. Over here, I get a good view of me. So I'm cranking the handle up here, up and down, which moves the drill chuck up and down. And you want to go in the drill hole. And what we're looking for is the movement of the drill. So it's going this way a little bit. So we move the table back a little bit. Turn the drill 180, check it again. Goes a little easier. So move a few more thou. Move back, trick it 90 degrees this way. Move way off. Too much. Looks good. You can also hear the little ding 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 as it hits the edge. Ding ding noises. Ding ding is when you're hitting the edge of the drill. So now you can turn this, doesn't do any damage to the hole. You're on center. So we got our center dimension now. And we take this out and we get a center drill. Go the other direction. So that's how you use a drill bit to do your center hole center. Now you can't do that with a drill motor in my hand. It doesn't work that good. Big center drill. A little dull. Been used too many times. Big stick center drill doesn't move very much, which is good. Okay, now right now our indicator or our digital readout up here is zeroed out. We go with 2725 is what we're shooting for, somewhere about in that area. 
We're going to make our final decision on the number we're going to use. I'm thinking 725 is a good one. So I'm going to go back and hit it over here. Give it a little bit of a kiss. And see if that's where you want it to be. Looks like it's centered pretty good to me. So you're, you're centered this way. And you got the height here that you want. Okay, I'm going to go and put it in there 725. Okay, that's in there now. For better order, it's in. Okay, so tap drill is 5 16 we went through that. I'm going to drop back a couple sizes just to see kind of where we're at on the hole. It allows me a little bit of correction, but not much. Yeah. Let's back it off even further. I'm going to drop down to a quarter inch pit, 16th less than we should be. Just kind of want to see where the hole is going to be. You need a small opportunity to correct your hole a little bit. Not a lot, though. Drill it through until it puts a hole on the other side. Right there, we got it. So it goes into that deep, even though we didn't go in that far. We are obviously over the hole. We don't know how close we are to the hole because we can't see, but at least it's within this much. So that means we're within a 30 second of center line. So that's a good sign. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 5 16 bit in there now, which is the correct tap drill. Something I was cutting, and I'm just skimming the hole. And that's how deep it goes in there. Okay, I set my depth stop up here or how far I can come down. I'm going to go ahead and cut the hole whatever it is. Didn't make any chips so we're pretty close. But I did feel a little bit of something cutting. We'll have to see what it is after we get the hole in there all the way. Okay now I got to get me a tap. Start pausing the way again. I got two taps now. I got a bottoming tap, a plug tap that I've already shortened a little bit. So this isn't a true bottoming tap, it's just been shortened a bunch. So you look where the first thread is. So this one here is shorter than this one, so I'm going to use this one here. That way it can go in deeper without hitting anything. They both have the same starting edge, I think. Yeah, they're both plug taps and modified. Okay, so now we just run this all the way through, 
Get the stop out of the way would help. And this is hard aluminum here, so it's got the tensile strength of about cold roll steel. This is cast over here, so it's a lot weaker. Alright, it's now officially plugged in. Go ahead and pull it out so I can clean the hole out. Out of way, so I got room to go in deeper. Don't need it anymore anyway. I also kept the chips out of there too. It's kind of a plus. Doesn't matter. I got to clean it out anyway. We just go down until we feel where it hits a stop. It's getting harder right here, so that's probably a good place to stop. Yep, right there. It's not a hard stop, it's just getting harder to turn. The hole over covers a the inside flywheel cavity you go and you're drilling in that area so it's half hole half knot so if you keep forcing a tap in there it will, it'll bend over and snap off or bind up and break whatever none of that's good so when you start feeling like doing that stop don't go any deeper so you got to chamfer the top of this hole a little bit clean up that first thread speed not a car bed. This is the brand new one I met bought. So far I haven't been too happy with these. See how that works. Which way do you gotta rotate? Rotate that direction. It cuts the first thread out, but doesn't leave a very good surface. It doesn't want to cut. Go back to my standard ball mill I like. <laughs> Too fast, you got to slow it down. Alright, so that's three different chamfers in one hole. Back to the one I always like anyway. Take our file and just knock off any fine burrs that are left. Not too much left. Cleaned up. Okay, and vacuum up the chips.
cap was trying to get away from me there. And we're back watching a very good little way. Now this one, this is 7 sixteenths. Oh, yeah. That is 7 sixteenths and 3 eighths. They're different. Good thing I didn't use that other one. It looks too big. That could have been a problem. Okay, I'm just going to throw the tap in this hole to see what happens. This is the original hole. Just basically cleaning up any crap that's in it. So you had a bad spot in there and then we went through it. We didn't pull out too many chips. Whatever you pull out chips, you cut metal away. <clears throat> you don't really want to see metal. Okay, one hole fixed. Check all these other holes while we're here, make sure they're good. Now's the time to fix this stuff. Trap doors all look good. Okay, all the holes on this side look like they're in good shape. Camera off and look at it. Okay, so there is the finished case there. So you can see how nice and thick and strong that is. You're not going to split that crack and have that fall off now. It's a lot stronger than it was. And I didn't look to see how much warpage we have in our case here. Wipe our table down. Actually, before we do that, yeah, let's turn over here. we're going to do a quick file of our surface here. I should have done that before I put it down on the table. Okay, now, all files have a bow to them, so I mark mine with red top. So, this file here is bowed this way, this one here bows this way, like this. So if you file on this way, you're going to hit here and here, not in the middle. If you go at this direction here, you're going to hit on one side or the other, depending on what side you're forcing it down on. But you're not going to dig in, you're going to be cutting in the middle. So you're going to be cutting over an area about this wide instead of just this much on each edge. So you always want to find out how your files work. They also get twist in them. So when you put them on a flat tab, you can rock them and see which one goes where. Pretty flat, only a couple of the high spots. Maybe over on this side. So there we go. Time for some interruptions too while we're at it. Okay, so I'm gonna put this over here on the table. See how flat this thing is. Still a little bit out. She wants me on the phone. Hello? Hello? I didn't want to get the phone quick enough. Too bad. Okay, so this is rocking a little bit here. So it's warped like this. And a little bit front to back, too. So we got probably five thou worth of warpage in that. Now when you pull this down together, that'll come out, but I, I, obviously, ideally, you don't want that in there. But 
They are what they are. Appears we have some chips fall out of some place. Even though I blew the case out, I found places for chips to come out. Okay, so now we look at all these other holes, make sure these are all good. So make sure there's threads in all of these. These have been heel cold there already. Okay, so looks like all this is fixed on this. And we got the one drain plug, so this looks good. Okay, so this case here we're pretty well done with. It's good to go. Put that down there. And then get this side over here. This thing here, we do the same thing. We look at the holes on this one. Make sure it's got good threads. No cracks. Obviously, I haven't cleaned the gasket surface on this one yet. These are all good. This is your oil pump surface. Make sure your holes are all good. They all look good. Cam cover holes. Just making sure you got threads in all the places where they're supposed to be threaded. Tap the block holes. They all look good. Motor mount hole is kind of torn up, but it's all right. I'm going to tap in there real quick to make sure it's clean. This hole here is half gone, and this one looks good. This we're going to put an eighth inch pipe plug in it, so we just unscrew that, no big deal. We put a new seal in there because we heated the case up. So I'm going to go ahead and heat a coil this one hole here. I'm going to put a tap in this one make sure it's good. The rest of this stuff all looks pretty decent. So when you work on the cases, make sure you fix everything right now, because it's easier to do it now than later. So, <clears throat> let's get the tap out. There you go. Go up here. So first thing I do is <clears throat> Check this one hole here. See, the threads are a little loose, but still in there. <clears throat> I clean up a little bit of crap out of the threads, but <clears throat> mainly it's goo and not chips. You don't want to see chips. Goo is one thing. Chips is different. It had Loctite on that thread because that's what I used it, so it looks good. Okay, the threads look a lot better now that I clean the puke out of them. So, see how the threads look a little better now. Okay, so now we're going to clean this one up here. If you put a long bolt in there, like it probably has, it's kind of a problem, but half the threads are gone, so we'll fix it right now while we're here. So the time to do this stuff is when you're working on it, not after you get the motor together. After you get the motor together, it's a pain in the ass to do this stuff. That's what I'm looking for over here. I wonder I can't find my this length. There we go. Figure out where the dowel pins are at. Make sure you're off of them. too much to hold a case down, just a little bit of pressure. That's all you really need. If you can't move it, it's enough. But I'll go ahead and put one more strap clean up here in the back, just to make sure it doesn't move. So the last thing you want to do is have the case twist on you when you're, when you're putting pressure on it, snap it off your drill bit or your cap. Yep, that was too short like I thought it would be. Should have known better than that.
Yeah, it's all held together now. It's just for the paint down through here, but you know. No biggie. Now we're going to find that hole center the same way we did before with the, the drill bit. Reds are pretty bad, so hard to get a feel. Okay, close enough. Okay, I'm going to put a 3 uh 16 heat of coil kit in it. Heat of coil, I should say. I stole one of these in there. This kit's already got the tap drill here, the tap, and the insert tool right here. Get all those out. This kit's pretty old, as you can tell by the box. Delicate with it. Just because something's old doesn't make it any, make it bad. The drill moves, so I had to move it over a little bit. I'm going to go over five thousands. Once I started drill, I saw the drill kind of walk a little bit, so I corrected it. Okay, that was quick and simple. You take your tap and run it on the hole. tapping. It's a lot easier than hand tapping. Unless something happens, then it becomes a problem. When you're doing it by hand, you got a good feel. When you're doing it on a machine, yeah, you don't have quite that feel. It causes all kinds of problems real quick. I'll try to put that underneath to get all dirty. Nice. That was good planning on my part. Okay, now you gotta determine if this is too short, I mean too long, or it's just right. That's always the problem. We don't know. So I didn't need blur that edge either. Get that real quick. I like the D 
deburr my stuff a little bit before I do it. Now this here you can come up from the bottom like that and do it from the back side if you want. When you do that you gotta make sure the burr has cutting teeth on the back side to do that with. So basically you come up from the bottom like that. And you come up, pull up on it. Of course, I know the screw is because so it's like kind of a drill chuck. You have to use more cutting pressure, more holding pressure than normal. Yeah, I'm just gonna really crank it in there. Hey, it's deburred. It's a backwards deburring. Feels good on both sides now. Fancy. Okay, we can count the threads real quick and see how many threads are in there. Yeah, looks like there's about nine or so. And we have eight with this. Now these are going to stretch when they go in a little bit. So I think we're going to have just enough to put this in there. We're going to be within half of a thread of making it work, I bet. So you screw this on to your insert tool. It catches a tang right there with the, the end of the tool. That's what rotates it in. Okay, now, tricky part. You can put light pressure on the insert to get it going because that's going to collapse the OD down a little bit. Now if you push on this, the holding tool, it just stretches the helical. If you put pressure on it with your, ten, with your crescent wrench here, you just rotate it down until it hits on the thread. There. Now you can push on the, the helicoil directly and put the pressure you need on the helicoil but not on the tool. And as soon as you feel it go the first thread, you stop. And then you just go ahead and jam it on in there. Feel the bottom. You're right there. Now I want to fold this below the surface a little bit. So it's just barely below the surface and this tang is right on the other side too, pretty close. So we're at our minimum dimension when I want in there. So I think it'll work. When you're real close on the edge, a lot of times you'll pop the helical out when you do it this way. Been, it must have been in the thread all the way because it broke the end off. Okay, so now it's in there. It's all good to go. Do it where it okay, so you take it out. Watch your toes for flying tools. See the tangs right here, it's just barely below the surface. Usually, I like to go another quarter of a turn further. And the light might help get rid of the light, maybe. Oh, wrong hole. So, we're, we're below the first thread, the edge, but I like to like, be a little bit further around. When you put pressure on the helical, it puts pressure on the aluminum, it kind of pulls up a little bit. So, you want to make sure that the insert is not ever going to hit the part you're tightening against. You want the case to pull in the part, not the insert. If you don't have it below the surface, the insert will not work correctly and have problems. And come out and all kinds of problems. That's why people, when they don't put them in right, have problems and they think the inserts are bad. 
the actual problem was the person putting it in. When you put the heel in right, they usually don't have any problems. So here's the one from this side. So you can see I got the little light back on here. You can see I cham uh, chamfered a little bit from the opposite side with that tool. And you can see how the insert is right there, almost flush with the edge. But it is in there all the way, but we're not tightening against this side, so you can be right up against that edge. But it's still below the surface, but it's close. Like I said, half a turn off would have been better. I told you it was going to be within half a turn, so, so it was. But I was able to fudge it. Make it work. Okay, so now this set of cases is all good to go. So now I can go ahead and take this, clean them all up, get all the gasket surface cleaned off, file all my surfaces, make sure everything's good, and then I can start putting this motor back together. Theoretically, I don't have to rebuild anything, but eh, we'll be double checking and everything just to make sure. I know for sure I got to replace the cam shoe tensioner here. This thing is just about completely eaten through, so I need to replace that. I'm not sure where it's wearing at an angle either because this looks like it's in the case correctly. Where's the case at? In here. And the light's going on. All right, there we go. So why is this worn at an angle? The reason it's worn at an angle, you would think because this is broken up here, it would have been going like this, but that would make it wear more on this side, not this side. So not sure why it's wearing on this only this side here. It's kind of backwards. You think the load would be on here? It would bend it like that too. Everything makes you think it would wear more on this side than this side, but it wore on this side. So I'm not sure why, but uh, either way, I'm going to replace that for sure. I got a new pad on here, so uh, these just pull these off and squeeze them back on a pair of vice grips is how I do it. And do this. this was a brand new unit before, so we'll replace that. I'll probably show doing that. But I know I got to do that, and I think there might have been something wrong with the pistons on this motor. It fried the motor or something too, I think. But I don't remember at this point, but. We'll figure that out when we get time to put it together. So there you go on that. So that's how it works. And uh, yeah, we're ready to start putting this one back together. Pretty straightforward. I got something here I want to show you too. Here's our new Tetro shirts. Nobody likes yellow. I like yellow. It's a good bright color. So anyway, there's there, and there's my logo on the back. So next time I get shirts made, which will be next year, beginning of the year here, January sometime, I'll get some. Uh, I'm gonna get some more weird colors, but I'll get them something besides medium. I like medium, but everybody else wants extra large this year. Two X and uh, XL is a common with this size this year. So all right, that's it for now. We're done.